Hello, friends. You're welcome to another SQL discussion. So we have been working with database and tables, but be doing that in a different environment, the PG admin, because we be working with Postgres database, right? And the question is, is it possible to relate with the database outside PG admin? Yes, it is very possible. In short, there are several environments that we could use to relate with the Postgres database or any database at all. Okay, we just chose to work with Postgres for the sake of this class. All right. Now, it is interesting that even the notebook environment could be used to work with the databases. Okay, now, how is that possible? We know that the Jupyter notebook. Uh, is known for it's, it's a Python environment, right? It's mostly known for its its Python prowess. Okay, so even its extension is IPYNB, its default extension, which means um, interactive interactive Python notebook. Okay. All right. So, but despite this, it is still possible to interact with all the kinds of languages and to do that we would need to create an environment that supports that particular environment okay we need to create the environment that supports the use of the tools to relate with our databases okay and um, that's th there is something with jupyter notebook known as magic commands uh, magic commands okay so this magic commands are usually written they, they usually start with a percentage symbol all right so they are they are they are a plethora of magic commands in jupyter notebook so it's it's more like commands that create this enabling environment for you to have access to you no know, foreign i would use the word foreign concepts that wouldn't usually or normally be possible to to access in the Jupyter notebook okay so these commands are are called magic commands and they are, i i think we could we could just this ls magic and this these are like examples of the several magic commands that are available okay in in the Jupyter notebook so we could see that um, there is available line magics and there is um, available cell magic as well, right? So um, let's see. Okay, so how can we make, how can we interact with the Jupyter notebook in this case? For us to, for us to start working with, for us to start working with the, for us to start working with SQL, we would also need to, install some modules or packages okay so first of all um, the postgres we need to install something that is going to enable the sql magic commands to work here or the sql commands to work with the magic um, environments in python um, in jupyter notebook okay so what what do we need to install we need to install something called ipython sql okay this is going to give is going to give the is going to enable um the the sql commands to or it's going to make it yeah it's going to enable the sql commands to work properly to work properly and uh notebook okay Environment. environment all right so now this is to connect with the sql then we would also this is this is to enable the commands of the sql commands all right this this to enable the sql command we know that sql is the structured query language so but we will need something also to connect to the database okay now we we could we could there are different commands we could use to connect to the database it depends on the database all right so we are using 
the Postgres database. So we are using Postgres. We could say um, Postgres SQL. All right. So we could do Postgres SQL. So that's what we are using. Okay. And so the command we use for the, the module or the package we need to install is called Cycle G2. All right. So Cycle G2. That's that's the module or the package. Connect, connect with Postgres, Postgres DB, okay, the Postgres database, okay. So if we install this tool, if we install this and this, then we are good to go, okay. So how do we do the installation? So we have to write this code, pip install. Um, install the IPython SQL and the Cycope G2. Okay, so let me copy this and run to the notebook for the installation. Okay, and I will press my shift enter and let's wait for the installation. All right. So, okay, I have already installed these two packages and that's why you're seeing requirements already satisfied. I'm just showing you. So in case you have not, um, you don't have that, you could just use this code to install, all right? So this is for both of them, all right? Now, after that has been installed, I have to also run another code. This, this code, let me write it here. So after this has been installed, to, to activate that environment, I have to use something called load underscore ext sql, okay? So this is what activates that environment. So let me do this and I do this, then we'll wait for the rest. So, so it's it has recorded, you, are, you, you, sh you shouldn't expect an output, okay? because it, it has created that, it has activated the environment. If you run it again, it will tell you something like, this is already loaded, okay? So you you would know by this, it tells you that the extension is already loaded. Now, now that we have activated successfully the environment, the next thing to do, the next thing to do is to, um, to connect to the Postgres database, okay? So, this is to install, then this is um, to activate the environment. So this is to activate the environment. Uh, this is to activate, activate the environment. This is to install um, the packages, packages. And after that, we will need to connect to our Postgres database. So what we will use is, um, we would, we would do this, we would, we would do this, SQL, I would explain this. So we'll do SQL, Postgres, SQL. Um, you don't need to memorize this, okay? You could just have it written and kept somewhere, okay? So. I would say, um, I think what comes next is the username. And then after the username, we have the password. Okay, we have the password. After the password, there is an ad. Then, um, then the hosts, the host. Then we have the colon for the pods. So I would, I would explain all this to us, okay? Then we have the slash and we have the database name. Okay. So this, this is just the template. Okay. So let, let me explain this to you. All right. So whenever you are connecting to a database, you will need to, you, there are credentials that you, you, you had when you were creating that database. For example, when you are opening your PG admin, you needed to put in your password, right? If you want to access um, a particular database, 
you'd probably have to put in another password or the same password or sometimes you just have the free rule because the same password connects both of them right so you have to go through the password you have to go through um, then before you get access to the database and then the table so those information are part of what gives that security okay so those are your credentials okay so you you don't have to memorize this 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 is just a template so that means um if for my database my credentials for for database i want to use here is this so um first of all we'll have to do sql we'll have to do the percentage symbol sql now let me let me pause here to explain this percentage symbol so if we come back to this notes we had seen something like um available line magics and available cell magic you can see the difference here is the line magics have just one percentage symbol right now the available cell magics they have two percentage symbols okay and i would explain both of them right away so for every code we want to write because this is a strange environment for sql so we need to let the environment or the cell block realize that the codes that we are writing are sql codes so this is the real magic command so what we just need to do is to write sql for everything we want to do henceforth any cell we want to apply sql coding into or sql queries into we will need to use this percentage symbol and sql in front of it now if we use this percentage symbol it's we can we we can only write on one line okay you know what let's let's keep that aside all right so um we would come back to that first of all let's let's just connect to the database so um i have my credentials um we'll just put the postgres sql okay then um my username for this database is called postgres and my password usually you, you don't you don't expose your password okay anyone who has that would be able to have access to your database which is too risky but for the sake of this lecture i created a different database that um the, the password is not going to hurt okay and this is not this is not public it is it is within the environment okay so i'll explain that statement too so we have postgres for my username and um, most persons who are creating their database for the first time on on pg admin usually have postgres as a default um, username okay so except you went ahead and did some extra modifications that's when um, postgres would not be your username so the password for me my password is um sql test okay so you put in your password there in place of password then you put in the at symbol for hosts my host is local host now um your database could be remote your database could be connected online so in that case you need to get the address of of your database the the um like a url okay so that's that's the host okay um so but in this case i my database is just on my system all right so i don't need an internet to have access to it i installed it locally all right so my database host here is local hosts okay so when i do this i put my colon then the ports the port for um postgres database mostly is is by default 5432 okay so uh, almost everyone connecting to postgres would use 5432 as the port then slash my my database name the database name i want to use is cohorts cohorts four okay and that is all so if this my credentials are right and the syntax is okay then it will connect so i would copy this i would copy this 
and go to my notebook okay so i would paste this but this is not going to work this is not going to work yet because remember i said we have to start with the percentage symbol and the sql okay so this tells the environment that oh this is actually um a this this is this is this is not a python code okay if i did not put that information and i shift enter it's giving me an error that this is an invalid syntax because it's expecting this to be a python code but it's not a python code so i would do this oh okay so i would return the sql and then shift enter no error because it has connected so as far as there is no error it tells you that the, it means the credentials are right the syntax is okay so right now i have connection with my database so what i am connecting to is my postgres database that's the postgres sql and it's checking it has checked that this username is correct this password is correct the local host or the host is correct the port is correct and it has gone to the database so the database name it has checked that there is a database imagine i did something like okay cohort which i don't have a database like this if i press enter you see there is a pile of error messages awaiting me to to study so because it has gone through my username could be correct the password correct the local host the ports could be correct but when it got into when it got into the server it realized that there is nothing called cohort database so the, the it's it gives us an error so because i don't have that but what i have is cohort 4 so i don't get any error all right so now this tells you that you have successfully connected um, with your database your postgres database please be mindful this is for postgres okay for my sql there is a different one so every database has its own kind of um, templates or boiler code that could be used for this all right now after this what do I need to do? So with this, I have been able to connect, I have been able to connect uh, my Postgres. I've connected, I've been able to connect with my Postgres database, all right? So that has been successful, all right? So then the next thing is I can now start my query. For example, I do this SQL and I have a table called employee table. So I would use my usual SQL code, say, select um, all from employee, okay, and shift enter. So it shows me the results of my employee table without stress. So I do not need to go into a PG admin environment or any platform that can house a Postgres database, then, you know, go open the query tool, write the query. Now, one of the advantages of using the notebook over those kind of platforms or environment is that you could save your codes here, you could save your queries here, you could save this notebook, even save it as a PDF, store it for a later usage you could come back to this and continue from where you stopped but you, you can't really do that in your pg admin all right because when you when you write you when you close the the um the environment you are likely not going to have access to the codes and even though you do it's not going to be as as visible as this see i i've created this uh, it has displayed this i can go to the next one to create but you can't have such flexibility in pg admin okay so i could go further and do whatever i want to do but i want to explain 
the concepts i want to explain the concept of um of the line magic and cell magic now th there are, there are times where i would the query i need to write would probably need to extend to another line okay for example i would probably do something like sql and um i want to say select all from employee and i want to continue the next the next the one the next line and i say something like where the last name where last name equals musa okay when i do this it's going to give me an error now this error is saying that it is an invalid syntax okay it's saying that it is an invalid syntax the reason why this is an invalid and, and if you check well it's telling you that oh look at what happened in line two of this you can see that um the employee the, the where last name equals musa is is invalid but it did not talk about the first line it means it recognized the first line but in the next line it didn't recognize okay so this is the line two this is line one this is line two um in jupyter notebook you could also save yourself the stress of knowing the exact line that they are asking because you could just come to view and um, you go to toggle line numbers select it you see that all your cells will now have those lines okay so those line numbers so if you continue pressing enter so you see so when an error message comes up and tells you the line you could just check and know the exact line it's talking of so this could be good especially when you're writing so many codes okay so now let's get back to what we're talking about so this is not possible because we use this symbol percentage sql is called line magic line magic in the sense that it can only influence the query or the syntax written on that particular line it can only influence the syntax or the query or the command written on that particular line but if i want to write code that would probably flow to multiple lines it won't be helpful that means i would have to copy this and you know place it in every line okay which would make our code messy we need to be neat in our code so uh, how can i achieve this that is why there is something else called cell magic okay that is another option for cell magic so for cell magic i would use i would use double percentage symbols instead so do this sql then i would write my code again select all from employee say then i could still come down and say yeah we could use you could write all those on one line but you know you could i'm just trying to show how this could work even on multi lines okay so we said we are the last name um equals musa okay when we shift enter you see that it gives us the information we need okay now despite the fact that there was nothing written here it has made that possible because the double symbol creates the magic in the entirety of the cell not just on one line okay why the single percentage symbol creates the magic effect only on that line so why should we even use the single um, percentage some people still feel comfortable using it but to be on the safe side i prefer using the double symbol because i like keeping my work neat so because if i'm writing this i will just put this sql magic symbol up and then do my codes down if i do this it's going to give me the same result so um going forward we would be using the double um symbols which is the the cell magic commands okay so we'll be using that now we have achieved this purpose of connecting to the database of even um, having access to the tables in the database 